You're listening to the audio portion of Workshop Wednesdays. Workshop Wednesdays is a free live discussion about topics affecting accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. You can join the ABO group in Facebook to participate live Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Just search for ABBO in Facebook. This podcast is brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com, where you will learn, grow, and build a thriving bookkeeping practice. We have hundreds of lessons with almost every aspect of the industry. Start your free month today at SchoolofBookkeeping.com. Welcome to another Workshop Wednesday brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com. What is it? I, I am, what's the Jim Rohn sling? I am fascinated by this update that came into this forced upgrade. So this is one of those things about cloud services, Sean, that when there is an update and it's forced on you and you're not ready for it, like me, it causes some fascination. What do you think you describe it as? The name of the problem is that. I'm sorry, what? Sorry, but I just not going to say if it's giving Dan problems, then it must really be an issue. Yeah. Yes. So we use Restream as a way to separate simulcast and, and do things. And glad you're joining us here for another workshop Wednesday brought to you by schoolbookkeeping.com. Forgot to say that. But it, there's this new studio that just was, I was putting off upgrading it because I didn't have the time to really dive into it, but now it's a forced thing after Halloween, everybody got the new update, whether you wanted to or not. And it has this whole concept of scenes that you're supposed to be able to preset these things up, which this countdown video was a scene and I switched right over to Q and a, and we're not there. So I had to add us manually. So what's the point? I liked it the way it was. Sean, do you get that feedback at Katana when it comes to those technical Katana, when we do up updates, we, uh, we have a beta program and before we roll it out, we, uh, we really make sure our customers are 100% ready and excited for all the pre 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 When they're excited for it. <laughs> yeah. They're always looking forward to our releases, but certainly things do move and change. Just to give us a little bit of context to it, we were talking about this morning, our design team. So we have a whole sort of engineering department is dedicated to the design, look and feel of Katana. And we look at heat maps and where people travel their mouse and where their eyes go on the actual screens themselves and like track people as like colors. I don't know if you're going to provide, maybe that's not true, but they track the mouse. And don't think. But the, the interesting thing was, we might change something that will be more efficient for the overall user, but someone that's been using the system yeah. and that change is, like, oh, whoa, that change happened. Now something is here and it was over there or now it's black and it was red and that could be confusing. Yeah. My, my 18 years uh, at, at Intuit, that's something that bubbled up to the surface. So when, when Intuit would change something, inevitably, as soon as the change happens, we hear from the people who were happy the way things were. If we're like, wait a minute, why did you do that? And typically in, in grand fashion, they, they do strive on, on customer driven innovation as their, as their, one of their values. And they would take that feedback into account. And oftentimes it would turn into a preference or a choice, right? So you could have it the old way or have it the new way. And, but typically, and, and what we're seeing with a lot of the changes that are happening in QuickBooks Online, some of that is not, it, there, there's a future that they're striving for. Like when we talked about Rachel, the new invoice experience in QuickBooks Online, everybody's got to get on that before QuickBooks adds more features and fixes. And we'll talk about that next week when, when we talk about what I learned in uh, QuickBooks. 
into it connect with uh, custom columns, right? Yeah, that's going to be cool. But anyway, we're, uh, we're coming in for a landing here with, uh, with Tron and this uh, series that we're doing with uh, comparing enterprise with, uh, with a cloud-based in inventory solution like Katana. And uh, today we're going to be talking about some uh, a core advanced inventory feature set, which is, what would you classify this as in, in your definition, Sean, of, is it just pick, pack, ship or order fulfillment? What would you classify it as with regards to this process that we're going to unpack here today? Yeah. Like high level, we would call it like warehouse management. Okay. Yeah. Cause there's not only the idea of picking and, and shipping, but it's also receiving. And so the idea of bringing inventory in and relieving it or moving it are all sort of part of that same umbrella. And we would utilize the same tool to accomplish those different tasks. Got it. All right. So Rachel, what is your, your take on, on warehouse management from a, from an accountant's perspective? Is that something that you found that you get roll up your sleeves, get into the weeds with them? I always have. I've always worked in accounting operations with consumer packaged goods. Sorry, I haven't always done that. But every time I've ever worked in a company where we're selling consumer packaged goods, I've always gotten involved in the warehouse operations from an accounting perspective. Because I was just explaining that to a potential client the other day, where we're um, probably going to get started on um, IMS is that the financials end up unfolding the way you need them when you're doing these operations correctly, right? And so when you're, let's say you're using something like Katana and you have all your orders coming in from Shopify, when you're utilizing the functions in Shopify, receiving the order, sending it to QuickBooks, making purchases, sending them to QuickBooks, and you're doing all of the things, you're also recording all of your transactions the way that you need them. So obviously, when you get to month end, you may have to do some more things, but, and obviously you're wrapping up and reconciling everything the way that you need to, but operationally, you're doing a lot of the things that need to be done while you're doing those operations in the warehouse, if you're doing them properly. So it all becomes streamlined. So you're not duplicating all this work. Yeah. And definitely with something where you discover, oh, we're doing all that on uh, spreadsheets. Yeah. Uh, or, <laughs> or something like that where, okay, well, that's totally disjointed from, from managing that sort of thing where it could be a task that you do in, in, in a piece of software and then the accounting and the financial impact of that just happens automatically. Well, no, we're, we're all like even doing a lot of the warehouse functions. They don't realize that they're actually updating the accounting at the time that they're doing it. But it's really important for those things to be done at timely and synced the right way for my accounting perspective. So there's a couple of features inside Works Enterprise that help with this warehouse management component. So I just wanted to share my screen here real quickly. Uh, oh, now we're on the right side of the screen. Okay. Thank you, Studio, for making this app. So inside of the advanced inventory settings, which we've gone in here several times in our series with Sean, they have two tabs here at the top that really flow into this whole warehouse management uh, workflow. And they are really just check boxes, but they, those check boxes start to unlock a whole lot of new features and functionality. So first is a barcode, right? So you have to enable uh, barcoding in a, in, inside of QuickBooks. And all this does is it makes an extra field on the item right, which you are going to associate a barcode with that item, which is 
I don't know, Sean, in a, in a, in a general sense, it's a unique identifier that identifies that, that item. Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, for sure. A lot of businesses uh, I see it's two ways. So one is the item already has a barcode on it. So it could be uh, a common good. The other is you want to apply a barcode to that item because it produced. And so you want to apply that barcode because it doesn't have an item when you a barcode on it, you, when you receive it, or when you produce it, it obviously doesn't have a barcode on it. So you want to apply it. Now you actually have a barcode scanner there with you, which is really cool that, <laughs> that, uh, that we can actually hear it beep. And that's such a, such a satisfying noise. Can I just tell you guys, though, I laughed so hard at Scaling New Heights when Mario from Mendelssohn was talking about one of his clients that was like, I want barcodes. And, but they couldn't explain why they, do you remember that, Sean? Yeah. Or, why they wanted barcodes? He yeah. was just like, I want barcodes. And Mario was like, no, you don't want barcodes. Like, you want to track the movement of your product from when you move from when it's packaged, from when it's sold, there's a reason that you're using barcodes. And so I always think about that now because a lot of people, they don't really understand, well, why are we using those things? There's yeah. a reason. It's for tracking. Yeah. That's kind of one thing I wanted to throw in there. And at, it, and at its core, right, a barcode, the, the, what it's solving for is the keyboard strokes that, that, you yeah. would, that would require you to type in the name of the, the unique identification of that item. So really, and the way I would explain it to people when I was in the point of sale or the retail space is that a barcode is like your branding cattle, right? You're just taking that poker and saying, this is what this item is. And, and then when you can see that barcode and scan it, that is taking the place of the keyboard keystrokes to type that in. Whatever Sean just scanned there, that represents, and when it beeps, it's just taking that, those varying uh, degrees of uh, black and white, turning them into keystrokes in whatever field you happen to have your cursor set in. So it's a technical term, it's a keyboard emulator device, right? If exactly. it's just an imp, right? It, it, it literally is just a fast way. Type it. Up, right? It's the same, you're receiving things off the back of a truck or something like that, or you're downstairs. We used to receive pallets downstairs, and then we would have to go all the way down there and unload them, but then our office was all the way upstairs. So it just could, there was no way. Yeah. So in, inside of QuickBooks, you have this open barcode wizard, which will then ask you what, what field or what field already exists in QuickBooks today that you would like to turn into a barcode, right? The item name number in QuickBooks is something that's already unique. So you could essentially take that and move it into the barcode field. QuickBooks will turn it, turn that field into a barcode. And then when you print a label of the of the barcode for the item, then that just turns that into entering in the item name number in whatever field that you are. And then typically there's a carriage return automatically put in by the barcode scanner to go to the next line, right? So it's just a beep as you're scanning these things in and that's what it does, right? Now you're not creating UPC codes by doing this because that's a process to actually get a UPC a universal product code from the UPC organization. Yes. One is the way you get those. But if you have a UPC on the item already, as Sean mentioned, you could just go into that field inside of QuickBooks and scan it in. So you've got the item name number that's unique. You've got the UPC code that's unique, but a scan is going to scan that and put it into the field. So. That's that as far as barcodes are concerned. So great discussion there on what they are. And then that feeds into the, this tab for called site operations, which allows you to enable uh, sales order fulfillment worksheet and purchase order management worksheet, which will then open 
new, new screens to be able to assign purchase orders to someone or sales orders to someone, and then they're going to be using a device, right? So that could be there, as far as QuickBooks is concerned, there is, there are some Zebra devices that have been around for decades and unupdated since, or you could download an Android app. Sorry, iPhone users, there is no iPhone app for warehouse management inside of QuickBooks. It's all those green people, those green text bubbles, they got the, uh, they got the go ahead because Android devices are cheaper yeah. and it makes it a lot easier. But if you're using the device, uh, especially an Android device, like a tablet or a mobile device, you cannot use the phone or you cannot use the camera, I should say, to actually scan that. You still need some kind of Bluetooth uh, barcode reader to read that device and turn it into something. Right? Oh, yeah. I remember when we were talking about this in the POS. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Katana is working. Are they working on a, a, an app that uses the camera or do you need to use a, a, a device like that, a barcode scanner still with Katana, Sean? You can use whatever you want. So you can use the camera on the phone. And, Beautiful. Uh, just, or, yeah, it's too just. You can open up the application on any device that has connection to the internet. So it does not need to be a zebra. It can, it can literally be anything that has uh, an interface and connection to the internet. And, and it, it'll run like as long as it can run a browser essentially. Yeah. Um, and then as far as the device that is scanning the barcode, like I said, it could be the camera or it can be any sort of device that can read the, the print format of the barcode itself, which is very common. Most, I think the, uh, the font is something eight, the most common one, I can't remember U8 or D8. And so that's super common. And most, uh, like I literally took this out of the box and it immediately worked with Katana. Right. For coming I It's great when it works. Yeah. And that was always the challenge, right? So like when, when it comes to barcoding and barcode scanning, the warehouse management app that you're actually sending sales orders or purchase orders to is not a barcode scanner like for entering in transactions, right? So there's two components to this whole barcode thing. One is picking, packing, shipping, fulfillment, receiving, those types of things. And that's the warehouse management side of things. But then the barcode itself can be utilized to speed up the entry of data, assuming you have something to scan and a place to put it inside of either QuickBooks or something like Katana. So what happens when you enable those, those fulfillment worksheets is the screens change, right? So this is the sales order fulfillment worksheet when that is, is turned on. When you have, I gotta remember which options here. So let's you know. Would the end user supposed to do this? Every transaction they're in the screen like this. No, this would be someone who is telling the guys at the warehouse, this is what you have to work on today. I um, so let's see here. Uh, I'm looking, I, I know there is something. That I've seen it. This is just the sample company. Uh, Impartial. No. Where is the footage? All items. Last they must have done an upgrade as well. Yeah, they must have done an upgrade just before I decided to. Oh, we know that's not true. Come on, Enterprise is yeah. upgrading the years. <laughs> what? What? The... That... What'll happen? Imagine if you will. We, you know, we want to be conscious of time here. Sales orders as they're created in here show up in here. And then what you would do is assign them to pickers. And that's, that's a step that's in between this process with regards to setting them up. You're going to be setting up a warehouse pickers that will allow you to assign the sales orders or purchase orders to them. And then that will show up on their device so that when there is, when they, they go around the warehouse pick things and, and 
put their disposition of those items into their device, which then communicates through the internet back to the sales fulfillment worksheet so that the person who's inside of QuickBooks can then take it to the next level of, okay, it's ready for shipment. We're going to print a shipping label. We're going to, we're going to then invoice the customer and go on with that. So the interesting note here is that the warehouse pickers do not count as users in your enterprise license, right? So if you have 10 people inside of your enterprise and 20 people out in the warehouse, you don't need to purchase a 30 user license of QuickBooks because those warehouse pickers, their sole purpose is just to use that device to be able to do, to do the things at the, at the warehouse. And then that communicates back to QuickBooks. They do need to be users set up with access rights inside of QuickBooks, but they don't take your user seats that you might purchase in, inside of QuickBooks. Does Katana work in that same manner where the, the people there, or do you, you don't even have a user limit or do you? We don't. Yeah. So it's unlimited users on both the application as well as the warehouse and manufacturing app. The idea there is we want as many people within the company that could add value to using the software, to use it and no limitations from that perspective. And so we've gone around and unlimited users, unlimited integrations in the system, as well as unlimited SKUs. So there's really no sort of ceiling on that. And there's no cost impl implication. Got it. And the other, the other task that people can do as far as warehouse users is not just picking, packing and shipping, sending out stuff that needs to be invoiced or receiving it and telling them, okay, this is how many we were ordered. This is how many were received. There are some that were damaged, those types of things. So the receiving and coming and going, they can also be assigned a, a pick, um, not a pick list, a cycle count. Uh, so they can uh, then take that same device, go around and count their, what they actually have on hand to, to help with those those physical inventory counts as well. So those three main features are that in inside of QuickBooks. So I'm going to stop sharing and then I'll share your screen to give you, where did you go? Where did your, I'm right here, right? No. What, what ha yeah, I think it, it stopped sharing again. We'll blame the update. I didn't, I don't think I said stop sharing, but I'll share again. Okay, here we go. There it is, and I'll share it there. There we go. All right, so now we're, is it, am I looking? No, I'm looking the wrong way there. I can't see you yet. Need to see me? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so maybe we'll start similar to how Dan did over on the settings uh, area here, as exciting as settings are. But I think we're a little bit easier to set up. So you can go and turn on your barcodes supplier internal barcodes and then register barcodes and then we do have this warehouse house application and then sean this is if they've purchased this add-on yes that's right so if we come with the right to control add-on that's okay. right. so you would turn on the pick and pack orders as well as receiving orders and that would then enable you to utilize the barcode scanning and the app to go in and receive those orders. And so first I'll actually just walk through the item itself, just to show you what the similar to what Dan had done. So if we look at, for example, this organic electrolytes, they consume this product at home. It keeps me hydrated and also have collagen in it. So it keeps my hair and nails. Oh, cool. Brian, I knew you were taking collagen. I could tell. And you can see here, we've got a, a registered barcode and an internal barcode. And so if I just, for example here, if I wanted to add in this registered barcode, I'm actually just scanning this number here and that adds that in. So now anytime I go and scan something, that's why I can add any product into my system that already has a barcode. And I would just go. Oh my God. How awesome. So if they already. It's just their UPC code that they've already have slapped on there. And it's just, you can just use that. Nobody has to generate anything new. That's 
that is the barcode you're using. Yeah, exactly. If it already has a barcode on it, there's no reason to. Then it gets confusing. I've seen, have you ever seen that curse where you have like a product that has like two or three barcodes? Yes. Can... Yes. <laughs> we actually work at a manufacturing plant and we used to have to apply new barcodes when we received it in because we only were able to scan our internal barcode system. <laughs> it's like, which one do you scan and all that, those kind of things. Yeah. We avoid that by just using the barcode that's already in. Okay. So now that we have the item, we can see where that registered barcode is being generated. If you do want to have an internal barcode, you can assign it one as well. And then we can go and look at sort of the sales order. So I put in this sales order here, sales order 34. Okay. So we can see on sales order 34, I have some alpha brain and some organica electrolyte on there. And I've got a quantity of five for the alpha brain and 10 for the electrolyte. And so in Katana, what I would do is I would just go and I'm ready to go pack all. So when I pack all, that means that it moves to a ready for packing status. So now if I'm over in my WMS tool, so this again can run on any device. So whether it's a mobile, a mobile device of some sort, the PC itself, because you've got maybe a, a laptop that you're walking around with or some sort of a tablet, it'll operate just fine. And so I can go into the pick and pack and it's going to have all the orders that I can go and pick here. Okay. So they're ready to be picked. You can see it is prioritized based on how my sales orders are prioritized. If I go back to the sales order screen here, just quickly, I, I, I have this as my highest priority job. So that is listed as the highest priority job for me to begin picking. Very easily, I can go and click into this. And I can hit start task. You'll also notice it does identify the bin location. So as I'm traveling through the warehouse, I don't have a bin location assigned to Organica electrolytes, but the alpha brain has, um, a bin ass assigned to it and it will actually organize your pick list based on alphabetical order. And so the idea here is you're going to logically organize your warehouse so that your employees aren't zigzagging through the entire warehouse, um, and wasting a lot of time. They're going to automatically run an efficient path through the warehouse to grab the items. Just like you would maybe if you're going to the grocery store, you're not going to go grab the bread, then the milk, then the eggs, or whatever the case may be. You're going to go in a logical path. You're not walk, walking over your footsteps all the time. Terrible, terrible circumstance. You brought some PTSD of, uh, because my lifestyle of we're always going to new grocery stores and they're never laid out the same way. You've got the outer rim, which, you know, is pretty consistent, but it's, is it on the right side of the store? Is it on the left side of the store? Where's the bread as opposed to, uh, the dairy? Oh. Of course there is the correct way to go through a Costco and anybody that doesn't go through the right way is totally wrong. Yeah. And so, yeah, there is an efficient way to do things like that. And I totally agree. This makes me want to go reorganize a warehouse. Oh, well, and that is actually when we think of coming from QuickBooks Connect and this idea of moving to an advisory service offering as an accountant and expanding your service offering beyond traditional bookkeeping. Really, this is an example of where technology enabled you to do that. Because <laughs> this is just one step. Like you said, Rachel, at the beginning, where the correct processes being in place enable the financials to be perpetually accurate, it also allows the accountant to move into, hey, you're going to utilize this technology and I can help you become way more efficient on the shop floor. And no one is better that in organizing something than an accountant, right? And so this is a great opportunity and we certainly are seeing accounting firms like, build up that cash practice and start to get into warehouse optimization. And you must my way of advisory for sure. And I would even, I wouldn't mind getting involved in that because I've definitely been in many warehouses and the ones that I've been in have been too big probably for me to organize, but I, for a smaller client, maybe just maybe dealing with one warehouse or one space and we're, we just really need to get everything start it off and do it the right way. I could go in there and whip that warehouse into thing. Exactly. 
I'm not so I'm going in and hit start task and you'll notice that it brings up the camera button. So I can use the camera to scan the barcode, but I can also just, so I've got this alpha brain. I tried it. Joe Rogan recommended it. Uh, so I can go in and scan that and it knows right away. I didn't select anything else. It knows that's the alpha brain one and I could keep scanning it and that'll make the number go up or I can type in the number or I can hit the plus button. So whatever is most and then it highlights in green once you've picked the quantity on the order. And you can see also the quantities here. It's a really nice little tool. Hit continue. And then you're on to your next one. So I'm, I'm ready to walk down the aisle. I go and grab, oh, there's my Organica. Boom. Ready to go. So I can type in my 10 pieces here. That's the quantity I need. And I would hit continue. So now green means go. I've got everything I need to pick. And I hit complete. And so that's going to now take that off of my to-do list of my pick and pack. And that's going to update my order into a packed status. Okay. So move from a ready for packing into a pack status, which would then trigger whatever the next case might be. Maybe you're using a ship station. It can automatically then generate the ship station stuff to generate all of your, your shipping requirements and documentation. Um, you can also go and send their, your invoice over to QBO just depending on what your process is in this case. But if it's ready and it's completed, I can just hit deliver all, and that'll move that to a completed sales order. That's fantastic. And it was like instantaneous how everything just synchronized together. So I appreciate you joining us. I know we have a, a kind of an abridged workshop today because we all had something uh, going on at the top of the hour or the half hour. Uh, so I appreciate you joining us, uh, Sean, and as al always, it's great to see you, Rachel. We'll, uh, next time when we have Sean, we'll talk in, into the, just in generalities, how, how Katana helps with, with manufacturer, manufacturers and compare that to the core building process inside of QuickBooks. So hopefully you can continue to join us then. Until then, we'll see you next time on the Workshop Wednesday. And I don't have the outro video to show, so we're just going to turn it. Yes. Have a great day, everyone. And that wraps up another insightful episode of Workshop Wednesday, brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion and took away some valuable tips and strategies to enhance your bookkeeping practice. Remember, if you want to stay ahead in the world of bookkeeping and accounting, be sure to visit schoolofbookkeeping.com. With a wide range of courses, resources, and expert guidance, you'll find everything you need to sharpen your skills and boost your career. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, please take a moment to leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. Your reviews help us reach more listeners and continue to bring you the best content every week. If you have questions or topics you'd like us to cover, reach out to us on social media or send us an email at support at schoolofbookkeeping.com. We love hearing from our listeners and are always looking for new ideas to explore. Thanks for tuning in to Workshop Wednesday. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep excelling in your bookkeeping journey. I'm Dan DeLong, and we'll see you next week.